Hey folks, um, today I want to just show you quickly how to use the FET program that we're going to be using in class here soon. If you were to go to the FET site, FET.Colorado.edu, or just do a Google search on FET, um, one of the first ones you're going to see is the one we see right here called the Circuit Construction Kit, and it's important that we use the one that says DC only. Now pay careful attention to how this works because there's a few little quirks here. We're going to first press download and it says students well that's you click there and then if you notice down on the screen there's a little warning that says that this file can harm your computer you have my permission to select keep then once it's done downloading it's a short little Java app we're just gonna pop this open and the very first thing I want you to do is to maximize your window there you go now our job today will be to construct and test a series circuit with three light bulbs and a parallel circuit with three light bulbs. So every circuit needs a battery, so I'm going to click on the battery and bring it out here. I'm going to click on three light bulbs. I'm going to click on one here, and I'm going to grab one of the red circles and just kind of pivot it. I'm going to grab this one here, pivot it just to make wiring easier. Bring this one over here and pivot it. You'll see, I'm sure, how uh, persnickety this can be. Uh, then I'm going to grab a wire, and as soon as I get the red circles close to each other, they magically connect. Sometimes they magically connect to the wrong ones, and I'll show you how to fix that. Then by grabbing this red circle, I get it close, and I've now connected the positive end of the battery to one of the two leads on the light bulb. Notice there are two circles there. We want one to each one. And if you get too close, it grabs it like one of those powerful magnets we use. Another wire. And another wire. At this point, as soon as I connect these, we should have a complete circuit. And we've got things rolling for us. All right, you know that we're lit because the blue dots, which are electrons, are flowing. And the, uh, they're not moving real fast, but you see some rays of light coming from the light bulbs. Now, I wanna try just a few things. One of the things you're gonna need to have to tell me is how many volts are running through each of these lights and being given off by the by the battery. So I'm going to click on the voltmeter. This should look very familiar, kind of like the multimeters we were using. And starting with the battery, I'm going to put one probe on one end and one probe on the other end. And it's a nine volt battery. You'll write that on your sheet. Coming through this light, we have it says a negative three volts. Now watch what happens if I just switch the directions of the probes. Now we're up to three volts. So ignore the, the voltage. It just means that you've got the red and the black on opposite sides. Just take the absolute value of the number and please tell your math teacher that I used a math term. I want brownie points. All right, this light bulb is three volts. This light bulb is three volts. All right, if you are listening carefully, all three of these are three volt light bulbs, or they're consuming three volts. And if you take a look at what the battery's putting out, it's putting out nine volts. There's some crazy math there, but this will be kind of important. All right, I'm gonna park this off to the side because the next thing I want to do is to tell to test to see how many amps are running through the wire. That also has to go on your sheet. And to do that, I'm going to come over here and select the non-contact ammeter. If you don't have an ammeter that's got this blue square with the target in it, check to make sure you're using the non-contact. Now for this, I'm going to put it over a wire, and that wire has 0.3 amps running through it. 0.3 amps through that wire. 0.3 amps through that wire, and 0.3 amps through that wire. Again, there's a math concept here that we can understand. So, so far we know that on a series circuit here, all of the voltages add up to the power supply. 
and the current running through everything is exactly the same. All right, let's do this again. I'm gonna come over here and click on reset and that makes everything go away there. I'll leave my tools here. This time, I wanna do a parallel. So I'm gonna just park three light bulbs. You really don't have to tilt your light bulbs like this, but from past experience, it does seem to make it a little easier. Uh, now I'm gonna put a battery in there and I'm going to have a wire coming out. This is goes a lot faster than the wiring we were doing in class. So you also want to make sure that you don't accidentally get that. See how they don't want it to grab hold? Don't let that do that. All right, this one's coming around. Ah, there we go. All right. Doesn't cost anything more to put more wires on if it makes it clearer. Now all we're going to do is add a wire here and here and what do you know we have a single circuit this is actually a series circuit with just one path for the electrons let's add another path for the electrons come over here and grab this one and we're going to come over here and grab this one What do you know? Well, let's do some testing here. Remember last time the three light bulbs added up to the battery, so let's test that battery. We have nine volt battery. This light bulb becomes almost nine volts because this is a fairly accurate little program. There's some resistance in the line that's uh, I'm slowing things down here. Now let's test this one almost nine volts. We're going to round it to nine volts. And this one is the same. So using rounding, we have a nine volt battery and everything in the series, or excuse me, in the parallel is using nine volts also. Let's check the current. And here's where I want you to pay very careful attention. 2.7 amps. So we come around the corner, 2.7 amps, but you notice at this point, some of those electrons are heading off to the left. In fact, 0.9 amps of electrons are heading that way. That leaves 1.8 amps this direction. More are heading off to the left, 0.9 amps. Well, those of you with a quick eye for math should be able to predict that, yep, 0.9 amps are coming through here. 0.9 amps, 0.9 amps. If these 0.9 amps are going to join the other 0.9 amps at that intersection, we should be back up to 1.8 amps. And then we're going to have 0.8 amps, 0.9 amps coming back. And we're back to 2.7 amps all the way in. So the amount of electrons coming out equals the number going in. You can imagine this being students leaving the lunchroom. If everyone leaves the lunchroom and a third of them goes down this hallway, then there's two thirds heading down this hall. Another third goes this way and we're down to one third coming through here. And they come around and these two join each other. We've doubled up again and pretty soon all the students are back in the lunchroom. All right. Couple of things that I want you to just be aware of and then I'll stop talking and let you play. If you have to change something. Maybe the wires all jumped into the wrong spot. If I just right click on a on one of those circles, one of those junctions, I can split the junction. And then I can, if I'm careful, because you do any moving on it and it's gonna wanna it's gonna wanna jump in there. Split the junction and yeah, you gotta go fast. You gotta be faster than the machine. All right, what we have just done is shown you how to use the program and giving you all the data you would need in case you decide that you're not quite ready to use the program. So at this point, I want you to go back to the beginning. I want you to um, go to FET. Remember, 
We're doing the circuit construction kit DC only. Get to that screen. Once you have your sheets all filled out, show me. I will put a stamp on them of some kind and then move you on to bigger challenges. All right. Have a good day. Talk to you later.